<laughs> Sometimes they sneak up on you. Whew. Uh, this video is gonna be unwatchable. <coughs> plague Marine, Plague Marine, does whatever a Space Marine does. Recently, I painted the best model I've ever painted, and I think I can show you how I did it. Turns out the best way to improve your painting is to get sloppy with it. And stick around all the way till the end to see a montage of models courtesy of EOB Completes. Hey guys, Jay here. Welcome to Eons of Battle. It all started when I was leaving my friendly local game store and not wanting to leave without buying anything, I decided to pick up one of these blind bags, Space Marine Heroes. Inside was a Plague Marine. Now I don't collect Plague Marines and I don't have any particular need for a Nurgle model, and this was actually a godsend. Not having to paint to any predetermined way or make sure it matched any of my armies gave me the freedom of not caring how this model turned out. And that allowed me to paint without the fear of screwing up. Instead of carefully base coating everything the color it ought to be, I loaded up a brush with paint and just went for it. I let the paint fall wherever it wanted. Blue on the head, who cares? His left arm is different from his right, who's gonna stop me? And instead of this being a disaster, it actually looks amazing. I think it shows off the model really well. It highlights the sculpt better than I think any previous paint job has. Everything just works. Colors come and go all over the model, but it ties the whole thing together really nicely. I took a look at this model and asked myself why was this so different than any other model? I like those, I think they're painted pretty good, so what's the difference? Now I have a bit of painting experience, click here to see every model I've ever painted, but the biggest thing that is holding me back is my inability to make bold color choices. Now what does it mean to make bold color choices? Well it doesn't mean using hot pink with neon green, or wearing white after Labor Day. It's not about choosing all the right colors, it's about how you use colors. These guys are both green, but the play guy looks so much more interesting because I use so many different colors to tell the story of a green space marine. And it hit me that real painters do this as a rule. Take this portrait. This is perfect because it almost looks like Rembrandt has a touch of the plague. That is his face. It's unmistakably a face. But what makes it so interesting? If I click around with my color picker, I can see it took so many different colors to make it. Greens, reds, oranges, yellows, blues, browns. They all work together to make the painting interesting. But enough of Rembrandt, let's bring this back to actual fine art. Miniatures, of course. Typically, the way we paint miniatures is the same way we learn to paint miniatures. You take your model, you break it down into things that need colors, and then you pick colors for each thing. It's the logic of every place a color and every color in its place. It just makes sense, but it's a little bit of a simplistic way of doing things. It's like a children's drawing. Fire truck, red. House, yellow. Bird, purple. Weapons, silver. Armor, blue. Cape, red. It's very much the Games Workshop way of painting, and it's an excellent way to do things, but there is so much more, so much more. I have such sights to show you. I'm gonna be painting up this Plague Marine in the same manner I painted the previous ones to show how I went about really harnessing the power of color and value, and how I broke out of my painting norms. I wanna force myself to introduce some slop into my paint job, and what better way to do this than to introduce some slop to my body. Now, when I first painted this original Plague Marine, I was just hanging out with friends and drinking. So I figure I have to keep the ritual going. I suppose the responsible thing to do will be to drink after the priming, after the base coating, and throughout the highlighting, because that'll be the biggest part of the paint job. All right, it is time to paint this Nurgle Space Marine. And before I get to enjoy my first beverage, I have to prepare this model for painting. And now it is time to prime. And now it's time for a good old fashioned Zenithal Prime. I'm gonna be using my Liquitex Titanium White. Uh, I have used some other inks in the past and I find them a little bit grainy. The Liquitex gives me the best, the best blends when I go from my whitest whites to my darkest darks. And it runs through the airbrush pretty good. Boom, and there he is. Looking, oh, gotta do the backpack but he is looking mighty disgusting, which is just what you want in a Plague Marine. Oh, well, his backpack's gonna be a little bit lighter than some other parts. Now, usually what I would do here is I would do this the day before, but ain't nobody got time for that. So I'm gonna give it just a little, little dusting of some varnish, just to keep all of my Xenothal right where I put it. I've had some good luck with Vallejo Polyurethane Matte Varnish. It did not stop my first layer of paint from sticking properly. A satin or gloss varnish might be slightly hydrostatic and make the wet paint beat up. 
but this varnish worked great. It is time for... Oh boy. Uh, by Grab Thar's Hammer. Whew. All right. I think it's time to prepare my palette. One thing I like to do when I want to give myself a painting challenge is I prepare my palette ahead of time and I only give myself so many colors and then I have to get the model done with those colors. I found in the past that when I allow myself to just take colors as I need them, I sometimes use too many and the model ends up looking busy with too many colors vying for your attention. I find putting myself together a palette at the beginning really helpful. Moment of truth, slopping on some paint wherever it feels like it. I'm just loading up some brush with some nice watery paint and green. Green, green, green. Now let's do this whole, this shoulder and this leg green. Blue, this shoulder. I'm putting it on really, really thin because I want to take full advantage of my Zenithal. Even though eventually in this painting process, every single thing is going to get covered. But it's nice to kind of uh, work work your way down to dark uh, instead of uh, working everything up to light. And I guess I'll bring blue onto the back of the green leg. I'm not really going at this with any sort of plan. It definitely helps that these are plague marines and so they should look messy and dirty, but this is just a really, really fun way of painting. And I'm finding that uh, the colors, like, you know, just slap, slap a little bit of this orange on the blue. Boom. Slap a little of the blue on the orange, why not? I think the more the colors run into each other, the better. And of course, always make your, your little nerglings happy nerglings. Look at that big old grin. So I'm really liking this, but it doesn't look deliberate. I think the first step in this process is kind of being really messy and abstract with it. And now the next step is just gonna be highlighting everything so that it looks like everything was deliberate. And since this is the end of the base coat, you know what that means. <coughs> there we go. It's clearing the pipes. <coughs> oh. Now it's time to make everything perfect. But before we get high on highlighting, I want to take a moment to talk about the EOB Patreon. If you enjoy our videos, the best way to support us is by becoming a member of our Patreon. Over there, you'll get access to some behind the scenes, voting on what models I paint live here on YouTube, extra live streams every week, and more. Now let's paint this plague marine up. I'm really going to demonstrate how to fix the abstract base coat on this shoulder pad. I can see that there is plenty of green and yellow, so now I focus on the different parts of the shoulder pad like I normally would, but use the original colors as a guide. I darken the green around the edges and used it to shadow some of the cracks and damage. I used some of my orange and brown to add some definition to the cracks and crevices. I'm still using all the same colors I used for base coating, but where the base coating was being random, here I'm being very deliberate with my highlights. The area that got a yellow base coat I'll be using to create a nice stripe of light, as if the yellow is the reflection on the green shoulder pad. Wanting to add some darker values, I came in with my blue, as it is my darkest color so far. I kept it really watery and glazed it over any part that is in shadow. To add my light values, I came in with some white and mixed it into the yellow to brighten it up. Mixing in black and white is a nice way to brighten and darken colors without needing to grab a whole new paint. Next, I added some very watered down black paint to some of the details, using it like a wash. This will make those rivets really stand out. And finally, what will really tie it all together is some edge highlighting of pure white. I only used white to edge highlight, and because it's going on top of all of my colors, it helped make them feel cohesive. Really, the shoulder pad is one solid color in real life, but using lots of different colors will add value and make it look more realistic. Alright, so this shoulder is just about done. I could always come back and do some last minute touch-ups, but it is basically finished. And so now, instead of having a solid green shoulder pad with maybe a little bit of highlighting on the top, it has a shoulder pad that transitions from blue to green, to yellow, to green, back to blue with a bright orange horn. A Little bit of work, kind of a lot of work, but hopefully the entire model will look just as good as that shoulder pad. Or not just as good, just as interesting 
as that shoulder pad. This is a completely new way of painting for me, and it's helping me grow as a painter tremendously. It's basically an exercise in learning how to highlight properly. I'm doing the same operations I might do on a boot or ammo pack. Finding a base, highlighting, and then finishing with a couple edge highlights here and there. But these Plague Marines are made out of small details. I'm having the time of my life. And I don't do do do. Really, it's all about value, not so much color. I mean, color is important, but when I'm doing kind of weird abstract stuff like this, the value is much more important. The difference between the lightest lights and the darkest darks are what's going to give the model that interesting look. Because, I mean, these guys aren't... They're green, but they're not quite green. They're not 100% green. There are many different shades of green and blue and yellow and red. <clears throat> but after I go in with a color, I go in with a little bit of black paint and a little bit of white paint. And the black tones it down and the white paint brings it up. <clears throat> As you can see on this leg, I've got some kind of stripes going. I've mapped out where I'm going to have my contrast. This leg is going to fade from blue to yellow. I haven't quite decided what this leg is going to do, but I have a feeling it's going to go from orangey red up to yellow. On this backpack, just my blending has done a pretty good job of giving me some darkness with the blue and some lightness with the yellow. So I'm going to go in with my white paint. I'm going to rub off most of it, and then I'm going to begin edge highlighting. Tops the top of these backpack little cords, the edge of this spout, the physical edges of the backpack. And these, this edge highlighting is just going to bring up all of the colors. Yeah. All right. Back to painting. On the back of the legs, there are some really nice overlapping panels that gave me the opportunity to add some fun, colorful contrast. On the brown leg, I painted on stripes of yellow and went back in with my brown, which now looks orange glazed over the yellow. My paint is so wet that it's giving me a longer work time, so I can slap it on, clean off my brush, and then come back in and blend my colors while they're all still wet. My messy base coat was a guide, but now it's up to me to make the map make any sense at all. On the brown leg, I decided to mirror the other leg, but instead of green to yellow, this leg is going to go from yellow to brown, with a good glazing of green to make it all look nice and sticky. On his Nurgly symbol, I could have washed it with black to give it a nice dark outline, but I decided instead to use brown. This will bring that color onto the shoulder, and the orange stands out really strong on top of the blue. Once the shoulder pad was nearing completion, I broke out the white paint again and gave everything a nice edge highlight. Even though so much of the model is dark, a nice pop of white makes him look really nice and slimy. And I gave his plague symbol a nice white highlight too. No decals needed for these plague boys. Ah, this is the most fun I've had painting a mini in a while. Plague Marine, Plague Marine, does whatever a Space Marine does. Can he swing from a web? No, he can't because he's big and fat. Look out, here comes a Plague Marine. This paint job is coming along swimmingly. Even though I'm not swimming, I'm on dry land. And I am now to the point where I'm going to paint the face. Uh, <sighs> I'm gonna paint my balls, I'm gonna paint my chains, I'm gonna get through it. And then I'm gonna get to the really fun stuff like the face and all the little nurglings. <laughs> uh, this video is gonna be unwatchable. <clears throat> I think the next step is his face and little nurglings. So let's break out the pink paint and get those guys painted. <sighs> for all the nice supple plague flesh, I went with pink. And I saved pink for only these areas to help them stand out amongst the mottled green and blue of the armor. I highlighted the skin with progressively lighter and lighter coats of pink until I was highlighting shapes with pure white. To bring back a little color, I used my orange brown. Watered down and smeared over the face, the paint is thin enough that I can push it and pull it with a damp brush, and make sure that it's only in the areas that I want. 
Although this is a demon plague face, I painted it like I would any other. Base coat, wash, and then highlighting the face, leaving in some of the darker areas for contrast. The places to hit are the nose, cheeks, and brow. <coughs> Sometimes they sneak up on you. Sometimes, <laughs> Sometimes they sneak up on you. For this little plague fella, he had a nice rosy pink, so I gave him a slime bath, letting that green paint fill into all of his recesses. Once the green was dry, I added some blue and black paint. This will help define his plague baby shapes, and added color will make him more fun to look at. Now he is colorful, but a bit messy, so I went back in with skin pink and re-highlighted the raised areas. I painted his little horn brown to match his plague marine. Like father, like son. With all my plague boys painted, it was time to finish the base. I took whatever colors were left on the palette and blended them together. The base coat was with brown, and then I worked in my blue, green, yellow, pink, and black. I want my plague marines to look like they're walking across a petri dish. I stuck on the backpack, and then the plague marine was finished. The only thing left was to paint the rim of the base black. I had an absolute blast pinning up this Death Guard. It's very rare for an experiment to go this well, but I feel like this little trio of models has helped me up my painting game tremendously. And a fun fact I learned about the Death Guard, all Death Guard are Plague Marines, but not all Plague Marines are Death Guard. Plague Marines are Marines who have given themselves over to the God Nurgle, but Death Guard are those Plague Marines who have sworn their allegiance to the Primarch Mortarion. The more you know, but I love my little Plague Marines, and I can't wait to get that fourth one painted up and get them in a game of kill team. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed the video, and I hope I did an okay job of explaining the artsy behind the fartsy. Why don't you guys comment below some of your biggest painting Eureka moments, and without further ado, it's time for EOB Complete. We put out a challenge to our community to send us before and after photos of their recently finished models to be immortalized in our videos. If you want to join in the fun, you can submit a before and after photo of your painted mini to our Discord server, which you can find in the description below, or you can post it to Instagram with the hashtag EOBcomplete. Without further ado, let's look at and get inspired by what the folks have finished this week. An Orc Truck by MickGZ65, Some Grim Dark Soldiers by Orange, A Legion Sikoran Arcus by Joe Dracos, Some Happy Little Gabos by Shadow Nomad, A Custom Plague Marine by Brugatsaloda, Abaddon the Despoiler by Moist Dangerous, a Gloomhaven Adventurer by Decimation, some Objective Markers by Just Make Stuff, a Necron Cryptek by Vega Wesky, an Assault Intercessor by Jubals, a Necron Satan Void Dragon by Zeechs, a Wizard by The Bee, a Swarm Lord by Mezmine, a Sister Superior by Stoic Taurus, a Windigo by Lo Gatto 2038, a Plague Marine by Sicarius, an Iron Strider by Grayscale, and some Primaris Inceptors by Huntron. Congratulations to everyone for a job well done. It's no small feat to get paint on minis, and you all should feel really proud. Nothing gets the hobby juices flowing like finishing a project, and we all thank you for sharing your work, motivating us and the hobby community to paint our plastic. Thanks for sharing. <laughs>